Welcome to the Digital Growth Hack Club, where we help you elevate your business and your bottom line. Here is your host, Jenny Jones. Hey, this is Jenny Jones. I am your host of the Digital Growth Hacks Club. Hey, listen, I told you guys, I've been telling you about this secret tool. A lot of people don't know about them, but I told you I was going to bring them here. There's going to obviously be a link in the bottom below where you can take a look at it a little bit closer for you and have a free trial. But listen, I have one of the um, one of the lead designers and one of the kind of the architects. He knows where all the moving parts is because this is a really big tool. But this is uh, I have uh, Michael here to join me here from Java in Cloud he's going to be able to help us understand the tool a little bit more. We're just going to talk about the development of it. There is a link. I'll probably have it up above that. I kind of did a small walkthrough on it. There'll definitely be a demo link in the bottom uh, for you to take it out for a test spin yourself. But listen, welcome to the show, Michael. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm, it's a pleasure to have you. And uh, then, yeah, I guess uh, I'll be leaving you. Um, I guess I'll be mainly answering questions that you have uh, and uh, I'll leave you to it. Um, yeah, and that's fine. I mean, that, you're good to go. So my question is, and a lot of people have, is what is what is Jobin, right? Because they want to know what is Jobin, and and I guess in a sixty second elevator pitch, kind of tell us what is Jobin. So I guess it can get quite complicated because Jobin is a bit of an all in one system. So it's not just like one tool that does one thing, but actually caters to the entirety of the recruitment workflow. So it has both, I guess, the sourcing aspect, easily find leads and find the people that you're looking for. It has automation aspects that reach out to these, say, candidates, clients, leads, say, whoever they are. And you also automatically add them and aggregate them into a database. So simultaneously also automatically create yourself a data repository that you can then keep track of as well through pipelines and funnels. So at the same time, it's a data repository, a tracking system, a sourcing tool, a outreach tool, and there's also an integrated email finder. So you can find contact details as well. That's a lot. I mean, so when we see systems out there now, right, and this system, this tool is used primarily for LinkedIn. Is it used for any other? Does it have a, does it have a plugin for anyone else? Or is just, it's a LinkedIn data mining, data grinding type of tool. Is that what it is? So I guess the easiest way to describe it currently is that we have, I guess, it divided into three solutions, being LinkedIn automation, since that's the main thing that we, I guess, automate and cater to. There's also the ATS side of things and the sourcing and enrichment side. We also intend on then upgrading later on to, I guess, other platforms as so well. So we're going to talk, okay. so we'll, yeah, so we'll talk about that. And so, and I, uh, Michael, hold on. So this is a big tool, right? So if, if mm-hmm. I interrupt you and slow you down, I just want to make sure people are digesting what this does. So let's break this into the three parts. We'll talk about some of the integration later. So let's start at the surface. So at the surface, you said is an integrating tool. I think as you said was one. So it integrates with, so is it a, first of all, is it a, is it a SaaS? Is it a cloud-based tool with a plugin or what do we got there? Let's start there. So I guess it's a bit of both. The SaaS is the, I guess, database, the, I guess, data repository with the tracking aspects, where the plugin is instead the interface that allows you to extract the data and find and automate your LinkedIn activities. Okay. Yeah. So, so I do need a plugin to get on to and get and extract the data that I'm searching for, but that's going to pull it down into the SaaS side and where I can manipulate the data. Is that, that's what you just said, right? Mm. The SaaS becomes your own product repository, almost as if you had it locally on your PC, with the advantage of being of it being online. So whatever, I guess, device that you sign in with, you can always access it at any time. Oh, okay. Whereas so the plugin is, I guess, your yeah. Go ahead. So the, so plugin, the is, plugin is instead the, I guess, the tool, the the I guess the tool that you utilize to actually then grab that data and fill up your repository, and then also to automate say outreach operations. So mm. I guess it's, okay. Yeah. So I like this. So let me ask you this. So let me ask you this one question, right? Because we're going to unpeel a couple of different layers here, but can I use your, just your cloud after I get my data, let's say I log in this morning and says, this is what I'm searching for. I'm searching for real estate investors in California, right? I can go in, pull that information down. It's going to go into the, the cloud side once it gets in the cloud side, do I still need to be in LinkedIn or no? I don't know. The, I guess the job is done. You've grabbed your data. It's now in your repository and it's for you to keep. And oh. I guess it's always nice to 
have the extension, I guess, handy because it's not just a one-time thing. Because since the extension is now, I guess, with this all-in-one system, it allows additional flexibility because you can more easily interchangeably utilize multiple functionalities. For example, the sourcing doesn't necessarily always have to be just the starting phase of finding the person. We can also use it to actually update and keep that data, well, uh, relevant because, well, people might change jobs or, well, things change. So you can use that extension to keep that database updated at the same time as well. So it's always handy even once mm. you've finished the initial phase. Okay, well, yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to keep it on the surface here. I don't want to get too deep. I just kind of want to say how I would use this and I can envision this the day in life of me using this tool. So say I pull down the people. Now, what I noticed on, what do you guys call that? Is it data mining that I get that? And I can kind of, I can go through and says, okay, I can filter. I know there's a strong filter piece in that. Give me one, if I'm a real estate investor, right? I'm using, my, give you my, use case. I'm a real estate investor. I'm looking for people to connect with, to do some real estate deals with. I pull them down. I could filter on, give me an example of some of the things that I can filter on. If I, now let's back up, let's back up one more. I think you shared something with me uh, once before when I first started utilizing a tool and I didn't know you had this power. Let's go back to the plugin and let's talk about the types of uh, pools, data pools I can do. Now, LinkedIn has an has a daily data pool of what, a hundred or a thousand? What is that? Just tell me which one is that. So the daily, uh, the data pool of 1000 is for the search, but that's uh, strictly just for the standard LinkedIn platform. I guess more specifically, it's 100 pages and LinkedIn gives you 10 profiles per page. So a total of 1000 for each search. So I get that. Other. Yeah. So I get that a day, I can get 1,000. No, no, as as often. No, as no, 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 I'm, that's we're, we'll, I guess. no, we'll talk about jobbing. We'll talk about what jobbing does. I wanna talk about what I can basically do if I'm just a, without, we're not talking about um, any any additional, we're not talking about Navigator or anything like, let's talk about a basic search in LinkedIn. I could pull a hundred pages or a thousand contacts. Is that what I can pull daily from LinkedIn? Uh, well, LinkedIn doesn't actually allow you to pull anything. So you either have to manually look through them one at a time, which is not time. Consuming. Well, I'm talking about most, and let's talk about most tools because there are some other tools and most of them, but I do, they do give you a limit though. So, okay, let's, let's, let's back that up. Let's back that question up then. So Navigator, let's go to Navigator because Navigator is a tool that they do allow you to do that. So Navigator allows you to pull how many, a thousand, is that what it is? So uh, Navigator still has the limitation of 100 pages, but it has 25 profiles per page. So in total, a single search can give you up to 2,500 contacts. So it can give you 2,500 contacts. Is that a day? Is that what it gives you um, in Navigator? I guess that's the result per search in general. Navigator on its own, I guess, without any extensions or say utilities. Okay. But in that case, you still have to kind of navigate through them one by one, as in you have to look at them, you have to select them, and you have to potentially add them to say lead lists or account lists on your Navigator profile. But you can't really do it in bulk on all 2,500. You have to still kind of do page per page. Oh, so it becomes, which, yes, it becomes, kind of so, so your tool comes into play where you can pull it down, but now you can start manipulating the data a lot, a lot easier. Okay, so I got, so that's where I kind of wanted to go because, not only that, so let's go, I'm going to get to that question, how I can manipulate it. First thing I want to get to is how much data can I pull using your tool? I know I can pull more than what Navigator gives me. I definitely know I can pull more than what a regular LinkedIn user gets. So we already established that. You're going to be able to pull more than that with this particular tool. But what do I get that Navigator doesn't give me? Just tell me that right there. So I guess the main difference uh, isn't necessarily as in, um, I guess, pulling, because the raw data that Navigator on LinkedIn give you is, I guess, these 100 pages. So it's a large, I guess, pool of right. contacts that you can make use of. But then once you actually try and utilizing them and, I guess, view them, which is actually the metric that LinkedIn utilizes, they have a limiter on profile views. So, mm. of course, when you're going to want to interact with someone, you're going to look at that profile, and that's going to count to your, I guess, daily view counter. This means that you may have 100 pages at your disposal and you can run searches as often as you want, but in the end, you can only actually view and interact with people a certain amount of times. This, I guess, scaling up the 
I guess, higher your subscription on LinkedIn oh, is. Oh, got it, got 100 it. free users have a very small limit, and they probably can't even scroll all 100 pages before they actually get blocked uh, because there's also a limit on the searches. Right. Whereas a sales navigator user can scroll through pages, but uh, I guess, yeah, the views will generally not be too much of a hindrance, but the fact that you have to manually go through each one is the main actual issue. So I guess time becomes a problem rather than actually being the limit on those profile views. If instead you wanted to speed up that process and have it, I guess, automatically uh, reach, I guess, screen and interact with those profiles, you then instead would reach, I guess, those limits, which would then prevent you from operating. But that's, I guess, where drop-in comes in handy, because it's able to, well, bypass these profile view limits. As in any profile that you import or extract, utilizing the plugin or extension, allows you to extract those profiles into your cloud repository. So not only are you building your own private repository, that is, I guess, an asset for you that you don't have to then rely on LinkedIn searches each time on, but you also basically can import these profiles as often as you want and do it in bulk. So rather than having to go one by one through each profile. Okay, so can, well, that's, no, that's a lot, right? That's a mouthful. So let me, let me digest that, right, for my listeners, right? I got all ranges. I got people just starting out in digital marketing. I got some people says, oh, I'm an expert. I know what's going on. What I want to do is, in, I want to re- repeat what you said. And I want to make sure that all ranges understand what you said. So what you're saying is, listen, there are once we pull it down and get it into our SaaS or our repository, there are no limits of the scrolling and all of that. I can do my data mining just by once I get it all into my cloud. Um, setup. I can do my filters. I can search for real estate only. I can search for real estate investors. I can, and once it does that, it'll start. I may pull down three thousand people, but it's only going to bring a hundred people to the top, right? Through my own, because I can do that in a matter of seconds versus in a matter of days. Is that what you're saying? As in, I guess to cut it down simply, Drupin has, I guess, a different type of approach to its filters. Sure. Rather than being a Boolean filter, which is, I guess, the standard filter that you'd be familiar don't with. Don't talk technical. Uh, don't talk Boolean. Yeah. Just say standard so also, search. Yeah, yeah. don't. So yeah, rather don't. than standard filters, it yeah. has an additional, I guess, optional ranking criteria, meaning that you can actually create a, basically a leaderboard, a scoreboard of what is more or less important. So you can actually distinguish things accordingly. So for example, maybe I'm looking for investors that have say large companies rather than small companies. And I can actually give them preferential scores saying these say locations are more important. These company sizes are more important. These roles are more important and so on. And so I can put the score, so I can put the scorecard together before I do the lot, before I do the search. Hmm. You can do that at any time. You can even save it in templates so you can load it in uh, at your leisure. And that kind of creates your framework that you can just reutilize each time. And that will then shortlist and will categorize and rank each profile by exactly those criteria that are most important to you. So you can flexibly find basically always the most important person for each of those roles. And that basically auto screens everyone that you just extracted and will automates that process. Okay, so that, so I got, I got a lot from that, right? And a lot of people are like, whoa, 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 where's this tool been all my life, right? If they get it, if they understand it, even if they test drive it, they will be overwhelmed because I was, I was like, look at all of this data from one particular search. I have a lot of tools, right? I, I, I use maybe three LinkedIn tools. I use them for different reasons. Then I got a job in, I was like, holy Toledo, I could find, it is to me, it's, it's, it's been the best data mining. Like, when, uh, you know, I'm in San Francisco, so they talk about the 49ers when they used to go and dig for gold, they used to pan and shake out all this rock to find the gold. This is a tool that you can shake out a lot of data that's irrelevant and just get to the gold and what you need. And that's what I really appreciate about this tool. One of the other things I do want to ask you is, let's talk about this email finder feature, because I th- there's uh, there's two other tools that I've dealt with. They say they find emails, but I haven't been that successful with them. All I want you to do now is just kind of tell me what makes your, give me an example of an email finder. So I pull down 500 leads for real estate, right? Some don't have, some may have their email that they have on LinkedIn. It's not private. I may get it. So out of the 500, I may get 50 emails. What if I wanted more? Tell me what this tool can help me that no other tool really is doing right now. So this state enrichment, 
can, okay, not only be automated, so you don't have to one by one go to each profile and say, enrich this one, enrich that one, but it can also be integrated with the outreach campaign. Because of course, what's the reason as to why I'm enriching these profiles? It's because I want to send them an email, I want to reach out to them. So you can actually just directly select who you want to reach out to, and directly in that selection, you can find a option to automatically enrich anyone that doesn't yet already have that email. So rather than wasting time in saying, enrich this person, enrich that person, you just say, I want to send an email to these people, and the automation does the rest for you, automatically whoa, 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 enlarging. Whoa, 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 let's back up, let's back up, let's back up. That's a lot. I didn't know you guys even did that. I think when we went over this and I think you guys are showing it to me. So I can run a campaign in here. I can run a campaign in here that enriches uh, the, let's say I just do a pool of a thousand people. As soon as I pull it down, I can run a campaign that says these thousand people, I want to reach out to them. So go find their emails. Is that what's going mm -hmm. on here? Yeah. I can do that in this tool. Yeah. See, I didn't even know that, man. You guys, <laughs> you guys are getting all my money every month. I didn't even know I could do that. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm being funny, but that's a very serious feature. So I could have an automated. So as soon as I pull them down, it says, hey, go and wrench these thousand. So it may take a while to go find them. I don't want you to get into any technical details, but it goes out and it looks and it brings me back what kind of emails, right? It doesn't bring me back garbage, right? It brings me back solid emails. What are you guys doing in this search? Mm -hmm. And the, I, guess, I guess the advantage on this enrichment is that it's not limited to LinkedIn, because of course, everything already on LinkedIn, you've automatically grabbed directly from your extraction, from your initial extraction when uh, pulling them from LinkedIn. Okay. Whereas that additional, I guess, external enrichment instead finds that detail on those contacts, say phone numbers, emails, and so on, from other social media profiles as well, like say Facebook, Twitter, and basically anywhere throughout the web, with the advantage that you're not using it for a one-time go outreach, but it's actually then being saved in your repository as well. So it becomes an actual asset that you can reutilize as often as you want. Whoa. Okay, so in most of the tools that I use, they kind of stay close to LinkedIn, right? You're saying your tool goes out, looks at Facebook, Twitter, uh, some of these other social media platforms, it brings me, it matches it up, brings that information back to my data repository, parks it in there so I can have this information as part of my enrichment. And then I could start reaching out. Is that what's going on here? Mm -hmm. And that process is automated. So you simply say, I want to reach out to these people. And in case they didn't already have an email address, the enrichment will find that email. And additionally, it will enrich any other data, which could be, say, phone numbers, other skills that they may have, other, I guess, data and details about that profile. And it just generally enriches the profile overall with more information that then gets stored automatically in your repository as well. Oh, my goodness. All right. So that, listen, that's a lot. I, my head is spinning from that. I didn't even know that. And I kept telling people, I says, man, you got to check this tool out. And they're like, yeah, yeah, I already have a tool that does that. I says, no, nah, you don't have a tool that does this, right? And so let's talk about, and I know, and I don't like to do, I don't like to show on my, um, I don't like to have anybody go over the software. I kind of want them to concentrate on what the conversation is, but you showed me a way and I want you to explain it, not too technical, but I could click on any profile on LinkedIn and pull that data without even being first party friend. You showed me something like that. Can you explain to me what, what you did? So I'll, cause I don't think a lot of people know that. So just tell me not the most non-technical way. What can you do with that? I mean, is that, can you just find anyone and just click on them? Tell me about that. Hi, yes. So I guess, um, the reason it may sound more complicated is because there's multiple approaches that you can pick for any type of interaction, which is there for the purpose of, I guess, being easier to use. No matter what approach you take one way or the other, you can basically find what you're looking for. Sure. If you prefer directly pulling from LinkedIn itself, when interacting on the extension, you can already find a button that allows you to enrich the contact details. And that's going to automatically do it then and there, also directly from the LinkedIn tab without even having to switch around. To any let's let's stop. Let's website. stop. Let's stop there. Hold that thought. So you're saying I'm just browsing LinkedIn. I may come to a, a post that has a thousand people commented on the post. I don't even know these people, but somehow I ended up, it came in my feed. Are you saying any particular person on that post 
I can just pull their data. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, Without me even knowing. Post, uh, for the post, there's, I guess, you, there's a bulk out operation because, of course, it's going to be time consuming to look at each person on the post. So right. you can simply click on the extension. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll say the technical part, but you can just save the link of the post and that's sure. going to download anyone that interacted with that post, be it people that commented or people that reacted to it. Whoa, you can also whoa, customize whoa. that. Whoa, 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 stop right there. Stop. This, this, this is like a Pandora's <laughs> box. It gets better and better because you're saying, I, so I do have a tool. I do have another tool where I can get anyone to interact with that post. I do get that. Here's what I don't get though. Because I'm assuming that that's something that other tools, I only have one other tool that does it. I use like three tools, but only one allows me to get everyone that interacted with that post, which when I saw that feature, I went bananas. So what you're saying is anybody that interacted with that post, I can pull every last one of them down to my repository. Mm -hmm. And then I can go, yeah, and then once I pulled them down, I can put them into automation and tell them that, hey, I want to enrich these thousand people that I pulled. Is that what you're telling me right now? Yeah, you can do that, yes. Oh, my God. And that's basically all done in a series of a couple seconds. And just like that, you've launched, I guess, whatever outreach campaign. Listen, you're blowing my mind with this. Because I didn't know, like, I know you guys told me some certain things and I still like to use my tools because I'm comfortable with them, you know, and most of them uh, I probably got at a, at a super discount. So it's easy for me to use. But when I have to go to a paid tool, I have to make sure that that tool is worth its money. And this tool is worth its money. Um, all right. So let me ask you this question. How many people can I hold inside my repository? How much information can I hold? Is this this a certain amount or is a certain amount of contacts or is it just um, a size limit, one one gig? What what can I hold? Tell me that. Mm -hmm. So there is no limits on any of the paid plans. On the free plan, there is a 10,000 contact limitation, Uh, but that's, I guess, simply because free users, I guess, could pile up and become- Yeah, you know how free users are, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, so- so... it's basically unlimited for any paying subscription. Oh my goodness. This is crazy. Um, okay. So is there anything else? Cause I'm looking here. I see my filters. What about exporting? Can I export them and move them to a CRM? And then I can do some further enrichments and put them on a drip campaign or something like that. Do I export or do you have any integrations? Let's ask that question. Mm-hmm. So we don't currently have any integrations, but you can export, and that can be done, of course, in bulk. Oh, so the, I can bulk, I, I can bulk, ex, ex, and it'll pull them into what a CSV or something? Into a CSV, so you can both store it either locally on your device, or I guess uh, pass it over to any other repository. Speaking of the drip campaigns, uh, that's exactly, I guess, not to go too, I guess, out of context here, but we are currently working on one, and we believe to have it out, uh, I guess, in a month's time. So you can directly then launch not only just the automated campaign, which enriches its operations, but you can also create an entire drip system as well. And the way we're building it is that it becomes multi-channel. So I can, for example, set up a connection invitation campaign that in case someone doesn't connect, automatically launches an email campaign instead. So you can kind of create a full automated, I guess, uh, flexible uh, campaign as well. That really? covers any type of... I guess, interaction. Oh, the- man, you're going to replace now. The unfortunate part, you're going to replace like four tools that I use, right? And just by doing that. So is that going to be an additional cost? Or will I get that in a, a regular paid plan? Or will you guys what, tell me, or you don't know yet? And if you don't know, hmm. that's fine. But are you guys in planning to incorporate that onto the back end of most of the paid plans? Hmm. So uh, I can give you some okay. insights. It's, I guess, uh, not 100% since it's not out yet, but uh, uh, from as far as I know, the, I guess, standard outreach, uh, as in the outreach method that you utilize, is normally incorporated with already other plans. Like LinkedIn Automation incorporates any LinkedIn-related outreach. ATS incorporates any email outreach. Whereas the campaign, um, we intend on creating potentially an additional plan, but that's only exclusively going to be for the campaigns itself, as in kind of templates of the campaign. It's going to be extremely cheap, like a tiny bonus of just, say, six dollars or less and what it does is it's basically the number of current campaigns that you can set up so i can have for example uh, uh we already have a free plan for each uh, solutions each feature 
And the free plan would really allow you to launch, say, supposedly, say, one campaign. So you have one campaign that you can utilize with all of your outreach methods. And if you want to have multiple campaigns as well that you can fully customize, so you can kind of build them yourself and cater them to what you need. And if you, I guess, want more of them, there'd be potentially a plan for, I guess, more simultaneous campaigns. Um, but the actual outreach itself is already integrated with the other uh, plans. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. So what is what I'm, what do I, I have to select what I want when I do CSV? Because I think I've done some CSV exports out of some large databases before. And I can say, what all do you want? Do you just want name, you know, name, birthday, and address? Or do you want everything, including notes, right? And so does yours allow me to pick what I want out or just gives me a full, it gives me a line with all this person's information on it. So it gives you a standard CSV format. So it's in, I guess, multiple columns for each field. Sure. That just gives you everything available. Uh, so it, it doesn't, I guess, allow you to customize, but directly then from the CSV file that you have, you can simply delete rows of say columns, sorry, for mm -hmm. the fields that you don't want. So mm -hmm. it just gives you, I guess, everything uh, at your disposal <laughs> then and there. Wow. Uh... I got to tell you, honestly, I'm impressed. Um, and I don't say that lightly because it's like everything I can think of, I can do with this tool. Now, tell me this, there is some type of x-ray button. Or does that sound familiar to you? Mm -hmm. What so is the, the x-ray? Yeah, what's the x-ray button? Tell me that. Because I was mm -hmm. playing around with it. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. Is it going to, you know, tell me what happens with the x-ray button. Mm -hmm. So the X-ray is, I guess, uh, uh, Drupin's way of, I guess, sourcing for harder to find, say, profiles. Because as you may already know, LinkedIn has, I guess, some restrictions on your searches, as in the results that you actually see are always only limited to everyone in your network. So either if you're new to LinkedIn, or if you're working in a, say, maybe new industry or new niche that you don't already have a network in, then you're actually going to have difficulties finding roles or, say, people within that, say, search. So whenever you're having or struggling too much to find I guess a relevant quantity of contacts, you can utilize the X-ray to scan not just people within your network, but actually the entirety of a specific website of your choosing. The X-ray covers multiple websites, and I guess by default, the selection is LinkedIn. And what that allows you to do is to scan the entirety of the LinkedIn database rather than just your network. <laughs> so if there's ever a, I guess, hard to find role, you can just <laughs> use the X-ray to find that uh, Oh person. my goodness. So I know I don't. I know I don't get unlimited of those. I'm sure that depends on what plan I have. I'll get a certain amount of those, right? I can just click. Or is that or is that unlimited? I can just click and just try to find something, or I only get a certain amount of those, right? I know. <laughs> so uh, and the X-ray is actually part of our free plan. So it's what? Well, yeah, limited. I can get X-ray in a free plan. Oh yes. my God! This listen, people. This is uh, this is some good stuff here. I'm listen. The digital growth hacks, we are going to, if it's a hack, if it's a way you can find and grow your business legally, right? We do legal hacks here. We don't do black hat, uh, dark web stuff. We do stuff that's on the up and up that finds an API, connects to it and do some different things. So that's what we do here. So I just wanted to make sure because I don't want the police showing up in my office or anything like that. Uh, but this is the digital hacks club. This is the stuff we're getting. I actually... I'm thinking about bringing this to my VIP. Do some other things at a VIP. Your founder is in my VIP, right? And so you guys, hey, if you're not in my V, if you're not in my own private community, this is an opportunity for you to get in because you can pick his brain on some other things as well. He's in there. He's in the founders lounge. Be able to connect with him there as well if you have some additional questions. So listen, this this has been exciting. Now I'm gonna ask you one more trick question. I don't know why I asked you this because I don't know where you're gonna go with this. But is there something that, is there a secret feature that you want the entire world to know? Listen, people are doing this, they're doing that, but we can do this. What is it? Because I've already heard like two or three things you guys are mm -hmm. doing that I haven't heard anybody else doing. So what is it? Is it the x-ray? We already talked about the x-ray. So is there any, is it like, hey, Jenny, people don't even know we can do this. Then I'm, so impress me right now. Go ahead. I'm going to give you this opportunity. So you may already have been, I guess, uh, impressed already enough with the email campaign. But what if you knew that there is an even easier way to actually reach out to basically anyone that you've just extracted from LinkedIn or Sales Engage or any LinkedIn-related well, platform? 
and that is through connection quests. Now, it might not sound special at first, because, well, for context, well, the connection quests, you send them to second, third connections. It's a way to you know, connect with people that are outside of your network. You grow your network and also kind of reach out to them with that note. And it then kind of restricts them because they want you to utilize emails to reach out to them to actually have that, I guess, messaging method. It's a specialty, I guess, in that outreach aspect is that you can actually bypass that LinkedIn limit fully and you can directly um, basically connect and both grow your network as quickly as you want and also directly reach out with basically anyone that you've just extracted from any search, any, say, post, group, or event and directly reach out to them with that connection request note. And there's also an automated follow-up that you can attach with that. And that's already currently developed even before the grip campaign that would then further automate. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, sir. So you're saying that I can pull down a thousand people. I don't even know them, but I know they have an interest in real estate. I don't know them. They're not first party connections. They're not second party. They're not third party connections. I can go and create a whole nother connection with them. And it, it is like off the LinkedIn grid, but it allows me to still, hey, I understand you're in this profession. I'd like to connect with you. You're saying I can do that. Don't even need LinkedIn. I know it is part of your normal LinkedIn grid. So this means that it's also going to enhance your actual LinkedIn account. So you're growing your LinkedIn network, you're enhancing it, and it's able to directly bypass those limits as well. So it's just, I guess, outright just improving the entire, I guess, scaling the entire system, allowing you to not only actually grow and enlarge your network, but then also use it as an outreach campaign. So tell me this real quick, and I'm going to wrap up with this question because I saw it and I, I understand a little bit, but I have a LinkedIn social selling index. I guess that's something you guys put together. But what are you telling me about myself? What does my index say about me or what is it designed to do? Because mine says your industry says real estate and then it has a LinkedIn social index. And my change is negative 1%, probably because I haven't right. posted anything in a while. I've been doing these interviews trying to help everybody else grow their business. I got to still do my business. I got to get on with my VA and say, hey, bring my, v, my, bring my LinkedIn social selling index up. So what is that in particular? So the social selling index is a LinkedIn analytic that you can also then access on the uh, dashboard of the Driven Cloud I guess, SaaS platform. Mm -hmm. And this allows you to basically have analytics and basically a score of how you're performing in your industry. It kind of shows you an analytic comparison between your network, the overall LinkedIn network, just to kind of understand how things are going in that industry. And also has a percentage to tell you, I guess, where you're more active and where I guess you're being, I guess, ranked higher and just kind of a general I guess, selling index to understand how, I guess, well your profile is doing. So it has an industry, then it has a network. Mm -hmm. So the industry is how am I doing in the real estate industry? Because it's saying here among uh, 710,000 people in real estate or who's identified themselves, it, is that the whole, that's the whole LinkedIn repository yeah. you guys are using? So out of those people, my average, it doesn't, oh, okay. So your rank is in the top. I'm in the top 27%. So really that's I should impressive. Be, is that impressive? I guess that's yeah, I guess impressive. So top 27% of the real estate industry on LinkedIn. That's, that's quite high. I guess. Yeah. So what if I got to the top 10%, I would be the who's who on LinkedIn yeah. for real estate. I love that. Okay. So that's what that means. Okay. So then there's an average, right? There's an mm -hmm. average there's an average social selling index in my in the entire network of my mm -hmm. people that I know. Yeah. And that's so this means okay. to the people close to you, how well are you compared to them? Okay. All right. So I'm in the top 64%. <laughs> I see. So it means you have a very competent network. Everyone that's, I guess, around you is, I guess, an expert in the industry. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it is. I mean, because everybody in there, there's a lot more people that's more into it than I am. Okay. This has been very helpful. Thank you so much for joining the digital growth hacks club where we help people grow their bottom line by looking for these small digital hacks that'll move the needle just a little bit in their business. I'd like to thank Michael for joining us here from, um, from job in cloud. Yeah. Job in cloud. Yeah. So listen, I have a link below. Um, I'd love for you guys to use my link. I think I even have I think you guys even gave me some specials that I have, and I even have a special code. So I'm going to put that in there so you can get a little bit off as well. 
Um, so look for it in there. Um, if you join my community, the actual job in one of the co-founders is in there as well. So again, this has been Jenny Jones. Thank you, Michael. This has been very helpful. Uh, hopefully it wasn't too technical, but it's funny because when I first opened your tool, I was like, boom, like, wow, euphoria. There was so much stuff. But now that I'm getting behind it, the scenes and looking underneath the hood, I'm finding out the power of this tool. I got to move up the index. If I'm in the top 27, I can get to the top 10% in this using this tool with no problems. Thank you. You guys have been uh, great. Thank you guys for joining in. This is a powerful interview. All right. You guys take care. Goodbye for now. Bye. Right. Thank you for joining us here on the Digital Growth Hack Club, where we help you elevate your business and your bottom line. Please do not forget to subscribe and share. And until next time, goodbye for now. <laughs>